Hello beautiful souls, welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona and this is part two of a series of two videos sharing some guidance and information from the Akash about the eclipses of 2021 in this uh, May and June of 2021. And uh, I am recording this on May 26, which is the date. So we just passed the total lunar eclipse on this date and we're looking forward to the a total solar eclipse on June 10th. If you haven't seen my other, the first video yet, I'm going to share the link to that below. Um, but I, in this video, the uh, guardians of the, the Akash gave me some very, very specific guidance as to some ways that we can help to prepare ourselves or some practical things that we can do uh, to support ourselves and the collective in this very, very significant eclipse season 2021. Um, and uh, just a quick recap, uh, this particular eclipse season, I was told, is like a period of purification leading the way to the solar eclipse of 2021 in the summer here uh, in June. And that this is going to be like a lot of significant just kind of light activations happening right now. And it's a wonderful, wonderful time to clear and release anything that uh, isn't going to serve us going forward. Okay, and one of the things that they really mentioned specifically uh, that I think I shared in the last video is um, a technology. And they say that uh, the technology is yours, dear ones. Part of your birthright as the creator beings you are. It is up to you to claim your technology, to cleanse it and purify it and think of it with love in your hearts. Your technology can assist in your efforts to raise consciousness within yourself and, and on this planet, but you must claim it, reclaim it as a divine vehicle for love. And then they gave me, I asked, what are some practical ways we can do this? And here's what they told me. They gave me three specific practices. And here's the first one. They said, clear your heart space before going online or interacting with technology in any way. It's imperative, they say, that you operate with a clear and pure heart. And from this heart space as you work or play using your technological tools. Okay, so just um, all it takes is a little bit of putting your hand on your heart and breathing in and out. I know uh, there's a, an outfit called Heart Math that has some wonderful technology that you can use to actually get into heart coherence but if you don't have that you know just breathing consciously in and out of the heart space will generally get you there very quickly um, and also roses um, this is another thing that as an aside I was another download I was given that I think corresponds with the heart space the scent of roses anything rose is going to assist also in getting into that heart space so rose quartz rose essential oil looking at a rose um, you know even mother mary also is a, a beautiful angelic ally who's got that rose essence okay so that was number one staying in the heart number two and i think this is important as you work with technology, you need to be in a radiant state more than a receptive state, okay? In a, radiance, a radiant state rather than being receptive. They say these are energetic states, so even when you are in receptive mode, such as doing research online or listening to a video, you will always want to anchor yourself to your higher purpose. Ask yourself, why are you here doing this activity? Is it divinely guided? Ask yourself, what brought you here? Were you driven by love or fear? When driven by love, your purpose shines forth from your heart. Even if you don't think you're clear on your purpose, your heart knows. And this is why it's so important to stay in your heart. If driven by fear, you if you are feeling that vibration of fear within, just step away, they say. There's nothing so important or so entertaining that warrants the entertaining of fear within your soul. Get away and reconnect to your heart in any way that works for you. Going into nature is a powerful one, as is heart coherence work, again, and prayer. All right? So 
two things stay in the heart. Number two, <laughs> stay in that heart and, and, and really be aligned with the purpose. And the way to do that is in the heart. So I think they're reiterating just really the heart space is the m most important thing to remember if you're only going to remember one thing. Um, and number three, here's number three, send blessings through the technological channels just as you send blessings through water. In fact, these two are intimately related, they say. When you enter the realm of the technological fields, you are entering, with few exceptions, the domain of water. Bring blessings to the water, send blessings, gratitude, and light, both to and through your technological channels and to and through the waters of the world. Both are important to your development. Both must be cleansed and sanctified in preparation for new beginnings and to assist in the birthing of the new consciousness. And um, this one last thing that they that I want to relay from the Akashic guidance is they say, remember that as a son or daughter of the sun, you may bear witness to fear without falling into that vibration yourself. I'm going to repeat that. You may bear witness to fear without falling into that vibration yourself. This takes practice and steady will. Remember that all is love. Okay, and I love that. So um, I'm just going to kind of let that be just a couple other things that I wanted to share because these are downloads that I received on the walk here. I had to walk <laughs> about a mile in to get away from the traffic noise. Um, one is that there's a big resonance of the number three that I've been kind of made aware of around this. And as you see, I was guided to sit with the trilliums here with the three petals, but there were a, a couple of other three images that came forward for me. And three is this, of course, it's the number of the tri trinity. It's this one plus one equals three energy. That's the life force. That's emergence, right? Um, and so this and three can also be a catalyst this is an energy that can create or trigger change without actually being changed itself and so i think this really relates to kind of what's happening here on the planet this is your alchemical power right coming forward as your christ self as you align with your christ self right this is the power of alchemy and this means that we can we can kind of bear witness to what's happening but then we can choose it comes down to free will choice right as we start to see things and and really we can choose to put a spin on them right we can choose to put a positive spin on things and that's actually alchemically is going to change our vibration and the vibration of everything around it right um, but it takes a steady will to be able to do that because um, remember that they were talking about water. Water is an emotional kind of element, right? It's connected with the emotions. And so the emotions are, are like super powerful. Think of being swept away by a wave. It's very easy to get swept away by emotional fields. There's a lot of that going on on the planet right now. So it's super important to anchor and ground, right? And if you think of um, what's holding these, these beautiful trillium in place right here, you know, it's the earth, right? So the more we can ground ourselves, come back to, you know, connect with that earth element, um, the easier it's going to be to hold steady <laughs> um, in, in the days and weeks and months ahead. And then the other thing that really came forward was uh, there's no hurry, there's no urgency, right? And it's super easy, especially with all these emotional things, especially if you're channeling the life force, right? Um, it can feel like really urgent <laughs> it's really hard to listen to where you're being guided if you're just barreling along so you know if you find yourself getting caught up in this urgency or this you know got to do it fast even if it's feeling you know it could feel super good for you to go fast and sometimes it's fine but really feel into am i kind of reacting to the urgency of what's around rather than than actually listening for guidance and um, and then finally, I just wanted to mention, I'm, I'm just sharing this because I'm guided to, it's part of my dharma to actually to share. Um, but like, listen to your own guidance. Okay, 
you totally have your Akashic Guides and you can totally connect with them. You have that capability as an awakened human being. And so while it's great to listen to other people's channelings, really, really tune into your own because it's there for you. And there's so many ways to to tune into your own guidance. You know, journaling through art, through meditation, through dreams. It's just it's just there. And any time that you have a question, you can just go in and ask, and you will receive answers. <laughs> so um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I just am so grateful to all of you. Remember that it's your birthright to be free. We'll catch you again soon.